so this is part three. So I was thinking that maybe um, that black male, Marcus Mitchell, um, would have been different. I was like, let me see what he have to say because I didn't have that much money. I only had enough money to eat um, a couple of donuts and then I would not have any more money to eat later on. So the black male, Marcus Mitchell, walked with me from the West End Mall to the Krispy Kreme um, donut shop across the street from the West End Mall. And we went inside and he purchased the donuts for me, like three donuts, and we went back to the bus stop. And he said, he asked me um, if, um, if I wanted to hang out with him for the day and I didn't have anywhere to go. Of course, I was homeless being set up pregnant outside and um, Marcus Mitchell had said, um, he asked me if I wanted to go to the mall with him, Dunwoody Perimeter Mall um, is where I like to go. And they had a black male named Rob set me up from there. And then they were having Marcus Mitchell say that he would bring me to um, the mall so we could get food. And it was a setup. And so I was like, yeah, sure. And so he said he needed to go to Wells Fargo um, so that he could pay his bill or something. And we went to Wells Fargo and he had asked me, um, he was like, uh, well, you can come home and live with me in my apartment. And I needed somewhere to go, of course, with the shelters, uh, not allowing me into shelters and putting me out of the one shelter that I was in as an independent black woman trying to get medical care, trying to get the information out that I'm pregnant and tortured. Um, and I did not need to be around somebody else that was going to be trying to silence me and trying to harm me and the baby. And so I, I, I really didn't want to go into the apartment with him, but they had left me no options um, because the woman had ran me, stayed for me to be out of the Salvation Army and ran me from the shelter after I posted the baby's heartbeat on my YouTube channel. And they knew that I had a YouTube channel because the entire country knows that I have the YouTube channel putting out the information. And she was trying to stop me from putting out the information while I was in the shelter for the United States government. And so um, I was like, I don't really want to go with this male, but I'm being left outside. And he was portraying himself as a nice person. So he told me, he said, um, I was trying to do hair at the time. Um, and I had uh, started, to started posting ads to do hair. And they were trying to set me up to try to make me not have any income and still pregnant with the baby still moving in my body. And I, I did not tell Marcus Mitchell that I was pregnant uh, because everybody that I told that I was pregnant kept trying to fight me and kill the baby. And so I just didn't tell him. And um, I was hoping that it would be a new beginning for me, that I would be somewhere safe where I could put out the evidence. Um, but that I also could just have somewhere to be safe and get on my feet. And so um, when I got into the apartment with him, he was telling me that I had to have sex with him. Uh, he told me that I had to be his girlfriend if he helped me out with any money to keep posting my hair ads. So I told him that I would be his girlfriend because he seemed like a handsome black male and uh, he immediately started trying to force me to have sex with him, and he was he ended up basically taking the sex, and um, I felt like I could not be sexually abused because of my pregnancy, and I was already on YouTube posting my journey from the Salvation Army and telling about all the abuse, and I couldn't take it no more, and I told Marcus Mitchell that I did not want to have sex with him. And he was saying, well, um, because you're my girlfriend and you're living in my house, you got to have sex with me. And so I left and he put me out and 
I came back and told them I'm pregnant and they tortured me and this baby and I'm thinking like okay I knew that he knew and that he was setting me up by this point um, trying to force me to have sex the way that he was I, re I knew that they I knew from the time that they made me go with him really that he was setting me up but I was just hoping that it would be some sort of breakthrough for me um, that people would have mercy and stop raping me and um, he would not, they would not stop. And so I went um, back into the house with him after I told him I was pregnant and that they tortured us and he started pretending like he did not know what happened to me, um, that he did not know that I was pregnant. Um, and he started trying to starve me inside of the apartment because I was still getting some food stamps uh, from Texas. And um, I had just applied for food stamps like a few months before I left Texas. And I had to get on my social media and film and record me going to the food stamp office and telling them that I was starving in order to get them. And he was putting me out of the home with my groceries and trying to fight me inside of the apartment with a man named Dave that they had in the apartment. And they had the entire apartment complex set up for them to try to fight me. And um, I ended up putting out the evidence anyway inside of the home because they were trying to have Marcus Mitchell and um, have me in the area where the black male had marijuana and they had drugs and they had cigarettes and I was not smoking any marijuana or anything in the shelter but because I had been so severely abused I did um, smoke some weed um, because of the sexual abuse that the black males were doing to me um, and they had marijuana and I did smoke some of the marijuana with the black males um, that they had sexually abusing me uh, while carrying this baby and I still put out the evidence um, in Marcus Mitchell's home they had they had a white woman um, coming to visit him in the apartment saying that she was the one helping him through the state. So I ended up finding out that Marcus Mitchell um, was claiming that he had a criminal record and that he had just been released from prison and that he had some mental disorders. and. Um, they had sent him to try to cover up the evidence about my child father being uh, bipolar, schizophrenic, um, the white male that got out of prison attacking me that I'm pregnant by, and that he, he was on a two-year felony probation for assault on a public servant. And it's like they were trying to bring in a black male and stage it like I was pregnant by a black male and then have the black male abusing me in an apartment and trying to hurt the baby in my body for the white people in Texas. And Marcus Mitchell was saying that he was from Houston, Texas. So I left Marcus Mitchell's home and went back by the West End to sleep at the bench. Um, and they had a black male run up and try to assault me and fight me and chased me pregnant all the way around the uh, West End Mall, which is what ran me back to Marcus Mitchell's home. And so I went back to Marcus Mitchell's home and told him that I was pregnant and that a black male tried to attack me outside. And that kind of kept me at Marcus Mitchell location because they had black men trying to attack me outside. And then they had Marcus Mitchell trying to attack me inside of the apartment at Luther Landon Apartments. And so I put out the information that I was pregnant. I put out the information that I was pregnant by the white male. I put out the information on my YouTube channel about Hollywood trying to cover up the information that I shot a white male and that I'm pregnant by him and tortured and abused. I put out the information that this white male's mother, Cynthia Olvera, took my little boy at 22 months old and threatened to gang rape him and molest him as retaliation for the shooting. And then she came to me doing witchcraft saying that she was going to have me killed within 24 hours for telling on my social media that she was a grand witch 
in a coven and that she took my little boy and threatened to rape my little boy and have people setting me up all over the country to be murdered for protecting myself from her son that got out of prison attacking me and my little boy and our home and fleeing from the police that had got me pregnant and was raping me and hitting me up in my house and that they got the whole United States trying to set me up to be murdered with a baby in my body because they claim that they're racist and that I'm black and black people claim that this is the way of America this is how America always was if a black person hurt a white person they take your baby and threaten to rape you him they uh they they rape your baby kill your baby uh, black people don't stand up for you they just keep on going on about their business turn you over to be killed uh, make you run for your life with a baby still in your body that the white people don't care that you pregnant that the white people don't care if it was your house that the white people don't care how much he was abusing you that the white people don't care if he was abusing your baby that all the black people just set you up to be killed because that's the way of America and so I was like okay um I done put out this information inside of this home and they had the black male trying to fight me. They had his roommate trying to fight me. They had everybody in the complex of Luther Landon Apartments is where it was on MLK Drive by Westlake train station. They had all of those black people trying to fight me. In the neighborhood, they had the woman that runs the apartment complex trying to fight me. They had um, them come to the apartment complex and try to fight me. And I told, I said, these people are over here trying to stage to have me put out on the streets for the Ku Klux Klan because I don't put out the information that they threatened to rape my baby and that I'm in here pregnant and they done denied me medical care and been torturing me uh, from Houston to Arkansas to Atlanta, Georgia. And that I'm in this house with this black male and yes, he's setting me up, but I don't have anywhere to go. And he's doing it for this white woman. Um, first of all, she claimed that she's a grand white witch in this coven that molests children. Um, that's racist, that's like the Ku Klux Klan. And they're angry because I shot a white person and they don't care about him attacking me. They don't care that I'm pregnant and they don't care about the innocence or virginity of my son, that they just want to retaliate um, and that they're going through courts uh, to retaliate and keep my son. Um, that they're having family and blacks um, paid off to keep me out of facilities and keep me anywhere where I can have my little boy. And so um, I, I ended up leaving. They, they stayed for the black male, Marcus Mitchell, to be evicted out of the apartment and then said that that was in the end stage for him to say he had a warrant and that he had to run back to Texas and leave me on the streets of Atlanta pregnant by myself after he had been raping me and trying to fight me and trying to starve me in the apartment. So they left me outside pregnant with the baby still alive in my body with a duffel bag um, on MLK Drive uh, by Westlake train station and they were trying to have other black males uh, rape me and bring me into locations and just start raping me um, like I was just a prostitute and um, I continued to call shelters and they continued to say they were booked and my identification had gone missing. Um, I heard Marcus Mitchell get up and uh, take a bag into the living room while I was asleep and I know I had my duffel bag in the living room and um, I had told him that I was going to get a job uh, serving uh, and that I was ready to get a job because I needed to put out the evidence about my pregnancy and them threatening to rape my son as retaliation for the shooting first before I got a job. So I had already put out the evidence. So I told Marcus, okay, now it's time for me to get a job because I had put out the evidence. So all I needed to do was have enough money to get back out there to Texas and to have something, some money for myself because they were starving me, leaving me outside in Texas. and. 
I heard him um, go into a bag and I was like, okay, I hope he's not going in my bag and taking um, my ID. And um, I ended up uh, going and looking for my identification and it was gone, it was missing. And that was how I get, could get work. And so now I only had my social left and they ended up staging for me to be outside with a duffel bag and Marcus fled to Houston, Texas, where all the black men tried to murder me in Houston, Texas uh, for protecting myself from uh, this white male. And so then um, I ran, um, hold on, so no, because there's people coming past me and they all see me laying down here at the train station knowing that I'm being set up to be murdered with a baby in my body and they're just gonna keep going to work like they don't know what's going on because that's the American way um, to, to allow another black person to be killed with a baby in their body and they just gonna walk past and keep worshiping the almighty dollar um, and the pyramid and um, act like they don't know that this pregnant black woman is on the ground uh, telling her story to people all over the country and she's pregnant and tortured. Um, that's the American way. Um, to allow black people to be murdered and then just keep on going to work for these white people. And so um, I, I, let, I was outside. Marcus Mitchell had tried to set me up as a prostitute before he fled to Texas. Thank you for um, me remembering how bad they trying to set me up by just watching me right here on the ground. Marcus Mitchell had uh, said that um, he got into a fight with the male. I was not on the premises, but these were males that were trying to set me up with him and the leasing office. And he was saying that he got into a fight with the male and that um, that the police were looking for me um, because I had went and got into it with the black women from the leasing office because they were telling me that I had to leave the apartment because Marcus Mitchell got into it with a neighbor. Um, and that didn't have anything to do with me, but the black women came to the house saying, oh, Andrea, Marcus is not supposed to have you on the lease and you gotta leave. And I'm like, okay, you didn't have any complaints about me. That was like, no, uh, we didn't have no complaints about you here in the apartment, but you have to leave because you're not on the lease. And I already knew it was because I was pregnant and it was because I was putting out the information about these Klansmen taking my little boy and threatening to rape him with Cynthia Overa and then leaving me with the baby in my body and trying to set me up to be killed. And they didn't, they were flying rockets and chemicals over the apartment. And I knew that the woman wanted to throw me to the wolves and say, me up outside pregnant and that that was why she was saying that I wasn't on the lease so I could not be there. So I got into it with the black woman and I was like, y'all not going to keep setting me up outside to be murdered for these white people because I'm pregnant with this baby that they done tortured in the jail cell for protecting myself and they done took, and, and my little boy and they done took my little boy and threatened to rape my little boy and instead of y'all helping me, y'all keep trying to stage for me to be thrown out of location where y'all done tried to bring me in there and starve my baby bump and then y'all done brought me in there trying to fight me and kill the baby and it didn't work and then you gotta hurry up and throw me out to another trap for them to try to starve us and fight me and arrest me and hurt us and so um after that, Marcus was like, um, the leasing lady going to call the police on you for standing up to them, you know. Um, so he said I couldn't come back to the property and that they were evicting him because he had fought a black male. And this was why the woman was saying that um, I couldn't be there because he fought somebody. So he fled. They, they made up some reason saying he had a warrant. And he fled to Houston, Texas. They claim, I don't think he, I don't know if he really did flee from Houston, Texas because I just saw him at Lenox Mall before they banned me from Lenox Mall. Um, so let me go into detail. So 
he brought me to a motel saying that he would help me and uh, stay with me in a motel after the so-called eviction from the apartment. So now they were staging for me to be out on the streets again. And he brought me to a motel and was trying to starve me inside of the motel and eat food in my face. And then he was trying to abuse me while I was on camera telling about the evidence about my pregnancy. And he was trying to say that the whites did not starve me and the baby. And then they were trying to have him abuse me on my channel and I had to get my Bible because I knew why they had sent this black male to me vulnerable when I was supposed to be in the shelter. I came down here to be into a shelter, so why do y'all keep making me fall into the hands of these black men that's trying to set me and this baby up to be killed? And they got charges. And so um, the man, Marcus Mitchell, uh, tried to leave me with a pimp on Fulton Industrial and he tried to set me up to make me walk around pregnant on the streets of Fulton Industrial and let them rape me uh, with the baby in my body and police was around trying to